There's a lot of hype and a lot of hope surrounding the conversation about a vaccine for the new coronavirus. But what about other potential tools in the works, like antibody treatments? How useful are they in the fight to curb the pandemic? That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Monoclonal antibodies are man-made molecules that mimic the role of natural antibodies produced by the immune system. Neutralizing antibodies, both monoclonal and natural ones, bind to viruses and block their ability to initiate an infection. If we're able to create effective drugs with monoclonal neutralizing antibodies against COVID-19, we could ensure some protection until we get a vaccine. Before we go on, let's do a quick primer on the major difference between a vaccine and an antibody drug. A vaccine mimics a virus that your immune system will, after a period of time, produce antibodies against in order to protect you the next time it detects that viral presence. This process of developing antibodies takes your immune system somewhere between one and two weeks after vaccination occurs, and those antibodies can stick around for years or even a lifetime. On the other hand, antibody drugs introduce already made antibodies that are ready to bind to the target virus right away. These antibodies generally stick around on a scale of weeks to months, long enough to fight off infection, but not to provide long-term immunity. One major trial of a SARS-CoV-2 antibody drug sponsored by Regeneron Pharmaceuticals examines a double monoclonal antibody that is designed to bind to two points on the spike protein of the virus in order to prevent it from entering and infecting healthy cells. A second major trial, sponsored by Eli Lilly and Company, examines a monoclonal antibody identified from a blood sample of one of the first U.S. patients to recover from COVID-19. Like the Regeneron antibody, it binds to the spike protein that allows the virus to attach and enter human cells. Both trials are being conducted in partnership with the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. The Regeneron trial, which is being conducted in previously uninfected people who've had close exposure to a COVID-19 patient, announced the start of its Phase three trial at the beginning of July. The Eli Lilly trial, which is focusing on utility and long-term care facilities, announced initiation of its Phase 3 trial on August 3rd. Results have been slower than initially expected for a number of reasons, one of them being our continually abysmal testing capabilities. Both the Regeneron and Eli Lilly trials have laid out strict timelines for when a participant is required to receive the drug after testing positive. In many areas, test results are too slow to meet those timelines. People are finding out they tested positive once they are already too far outside the window during which they should have received the drug, making it difficult to enroll enough participants. Some argue that this slow progress, along with the lack of investment in antibody drugs compared to that of vaccines in the pandemic, may have led to us missing a big window of opportunity. In a Stat News article, the former commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration, Scott Gottlieb, expressed concern over the actual significance of antibody treatments in bringing the pandemic to heel. That's not to say they are useless. Whether or not they are developed in time to change the pre-vaccine course of the pandemic, antibody drugs could help high-risk individuals after they've been exposed to the virus, a point at which it's too late for a vaccine to be helpful. And as that Stat News article points out, a vaccine isn't going to work for everybody. Should we arrive at a successful vaccine for the novel coronavirus, it is likely to be more similar to a flu vaccine than a measles vaccine in terms of prevention. That's still very important, but it means we'll need treatment options, potentially including antibody drugs, for people who still end up getting sick. Age, enjoy this episode. You might enjoy this previous episode on COVID and long-term recovery. We'd also appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the show down below. And if you go on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show even through a pandemic. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.